guys, what's up? It's Raven, and today I'm going to show you how you can DIY your own big feather hair extension. I know this is very trendy right now. I never really liked it when I first saw it, but then I saw people wearing bigger feathers like these, and I was like, now that's my type of feathers. I like big and bold. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can make this big feather hair accessory at home for less than $10. Okay, now you're only gonna need a few things to create this feather hair accessory. Um, everything that I bought was less than $3 each, and I wasn't even looking for the cheapest items, so you could find these items for really cheap. First thing, of course, is feathers. I bought these brown assorted feathers. There's probably like a hundred, at least a hundred feathers in this bag. I got this at Michael's for $2.99. So it's $3 for a gazillion feathers. And they also have them, they come in multicolors. You can get neon colors um, or you can just get the basic brown ones like I got to kind of like match my hair. I picked out three from that bunch. They're gonna come in a bunch of different sizes in there. They have large ones in there and small ones. So I picked out the orangish brown the dark brown and the cream colored feathers in kind of the larger size. I also bought a package of these big peacock feathers at Michael's, also $2.99. It came in a pack of two. And you could do this feather extension with one of these as well or add this to yours if you want to go for a super bold look. So these are $2.99 at Michael's as well. Besides the feathers, other things you're going to need are string. This is thread that is used for hair weaving or hair extensions. It's the thread that I also use to sew the clips to my hair extensions. Um, I had this already laying around and it's brown to match my hair so I thought I'd just use that. But you don't have to use thread especially made for hair. You can use sewing thread or any kind of string you can find that is thin and that matches your hair color. This was about two dollars at Sally's Beauty Supply or, you know, you can get your regular old sewing thread for what, like $2 or less. You also need a pair of scissors to cut your thread, obviously. A hot glue gun with glue sticks, of course. Now, there are other optional materials you can use if you want to bring this project up to a slightly more professional level. I actually did this with the one I'm wearing in my hair. You're going to need some crimp beads, and for you, non jewelry makers out there they're these little tiny beads that are um, made of thin metal so they are pliable you can squeeze them to flatten them out and what I use these for is as clamps to clamp the extension to my hair and I used a pair of jewelry pliers flat nose jewelry pliers to squeeze the um, crimp beads and this is just um, a basic jeweler's necessity so I had to go out and buy some more because I was out but I already had these laying around. If you don't have jewelry pliers regular handyman pliers work too. They're a little bit bigger so you have to be a little bit more careful but they work too. You can get these jewelry crimp beads at any jewelry making store or I got these at Michaels for $2.99 as well and they came with I think 60 pieces and what I did was I got the biggest ones they come in different sizes so there's ones that are really really tiny and these are the biggest ones you'll also need a regular sewing needle like this be prepared to ruin this sewing needle you won't be able to sew with it after you get done with it just FYI and you'll also need a pencil with an eraser that is optional though so I'm going to show you how to do it with and without those things. Step one of making these feather hair accessories is to cut your string or thread or whatever you're using to the length of your hair. My hair is a little past shoulder length, so I'm just gonna measure it by holding it up to my hair. That's maybe about a foot of string, so just cut that right off. Okay, for step two, after you've cut your string to the length of your hair, you're going to lay it out straight you're going to take your first feather that you want to be at the top of your extension. I'm going to layer my feathers according to size, so I'm going to find out what the smallest feather is and use that one first. 
you can do it however you want to do it. The feathers should have this little exposed tip on the end right there. What you're gonna do is take your hot glue gun and put a little dab of glue right on that tip. Just a really small little dot of glue. Sometimes it's hard, you squeeze out too much. Just be careful, wipe away the excess. Now quickly before that dries, you're going to stick that near the top, but not at the very top of your string. So stick it on, pick up the string with it, then let it cool off so that you don't burn yourself and kind of roll the feather to the string. This kind of takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of trial and error to figure out how to actually glue the feather to the string. It will attach very nicely and it will look pretty neat as well so you won't have hot glue going everywhere. Then you're going to repeat the same gluing process. Take your next feather, so I'm going to take my next biggest size which is the dark brown one. Now with this you want to make sure that you're gluing your feathers on in all the same direction because feathers kind of tend to have a little curve to them so make sure you're gluing them on according to the curve. You don't want some flipping out and some flipping in. Glue on the tip. Go a little bit further down your string. Now you have this tail of the string hanging off after the last feather. You don't need that unless you're going to continue adding more feathers all the way down, which I'm not. Cut that tail off and there you go. So now you have your three feathers attached to your thread. Make sure you go back and remove any hot glue strings you may have flying around there. You should have this little tail of string hanging off the beginning of it. You're going to use this tail of string. Now this is if you don't want to use the little crimp beads that I showed you that I told you were optional. If you don't want to use those and you just want to go ahead and put in your hair like this, find where you want to put it. Take um, a section that's kind of underneath. You don't want to do it on the first outside layer of your hair, otherwise you'll be able to see it and it will look kind of messy. Take a small chunk of your hair where you want your extension to go. And this is a simple way to do it. Take your little string and tie it on. Okay, sorry about that guys, but it was really hard for me to do it on camera. So I went and I tied it on in the mirror. All I did was take that chunk of hair, where is it? Take that chunk of hair and tie the string around the chunk of hair. And release your hair. And voila, now I've got two big old extensions in my hair. It looks a little crazy. There you go. That is one way to attach it. Obviously these are not the kind where you leave it in and you can wash it and you can curl them like real hair. No, these are an accessory just like earrings or anything. So put it in for the day, take it out when you get home, easy as pie. Now I'm going to show you the second, a little bit more professional way to attach it that will definitely stay on all day. What you're going to do is take one crimp bead, take that tail end of the extension, and thread the crimp bead onto it. It's kind of hard to get your hair through the bead while keeping the bead on the thread. So once again, you kind of have to mess around with how you're gonna do that. So I'm gonna show you a way that I figured out to do it. I'm gonna give my little sister some credit. She was rerouting a doll's hair and she created this idea for a rerouter where you take a sewing needle um, and you take the part where you put the thread and you cut that very very tip of it off so that it leaves two prongs exposed. To make it easier to hold she stuck it into the eraser of a pencil so you have a little handle. So it looks like this in the end. And make sure that your needle fits through your crimping bead, mine does. It's gonna be hard for me to show you this on my own hair, so I'm gonna use a handy dandy hair extension to show you. Take a very small, small, small chunk of hair on your head, where you want the extension to go. Take your tool and use those two prongs like a fork to grab the hair like so. And it'll kind of help you hold it there in place. You're gonna have to hold that contraption with one hand, like this, kind of like a little bow and arrow. Your bead in the other hand, it's a little difficult, and 
shove the contraption through the bead so that you're shoving the hair through too. Grab onto the hair, pull out the needle, and that's going to really help you get the hair through the bead so that you can, but don't pull out the thing like I just did, so that you can shimmy the hair on through. Much easier to just re-thread the extension through the bead while it's on the hair than trying to do the hair while it's on the thing. I don't know why. But, so I'm just going to re-thread that on there. No big deal. And there. Now I have both the thread and my hair going through the crimp bead. You slide that all the way up to wherever you want it to be. Take your jewelry pliers or whatever pliers you're using. You're going to squeeze the crimp bead and squeeze it really tight so that it creates a tight bond and it will not slide anywhere. Now you might be asking, how do I get it off my hair if it's so tight on there? Well, see how you squeeze it flat? Well, if you take your pliers when you're ready to take it out, turn it the other way and squeeze it the opposite direction, you're going to be opening it back up. But yeah, open it up and slide it out and voila and then throw away the crimp bead because it won't be usable after that. Like I said that's a little bit more professional, a little bit more advanced, harder to do. As you saw I was even struggling doing it here. So those are the two ways you can attach it, tying it on and using the crimp bead method. Um, good luck with the crimp bead method, I know it's a little bit difficult. But tying it on, if you tie it well enough, will work just as well. If you um, want to experiment with different ways of attaching it, tie it to a bobby pin, tie it to a hair clip, glue it to a hair clip, glue it to a hair extension clip, there's multiple ways you can get this thing to your hair. And voila, you have a really cute, really awesome, customized, because you can pick the exact feathers and colors you want, hair accessory. And I think it's really awesome, and I'm going to be making a lot of these and I might even put some on my Etsy store let me know if you think that's a good idea in the comment section should I put these on sale on my Etsy store would you guys buy them and how much would you buy them for so thank you guys thanks for watching as always and bye